Hello, it's Chago here. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> assholes. I hate you guys. I'm trying my best, okay? Thank you. No, look. Oh, I got you all fooled. It's not Chago. It's just me, Ola. Shit, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola. Hell, what's up? Congratulations for sitting through that first half of this video, which was basically that uh, half so-so song that I made there. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I challenged myself to write something the same day or just before I record these Sundays with Ola, just to force myself to write something. And now today, I mean, it's not the best work I made, but to find the good songs and the good riffs, you have to have those in-between days. And this was definitely an in-between day. But there you go. The drums for that intro section will be available for you to download in the description of this video. You can write your own riffs to those drums and maybe I'll feature you in the next Sunday with Ola. Did you see this, by the way? We sort of had a similar guitar like this way back, but not with an Evertune, so now it's back. It's the GC 1.6 with an Evertune. I mean, look at that. Can you see? That's a beautiful ass flame right there, and it's available from SolarGuitars.com right now. Yes, you guys are in for a great, great Sunday. Uh, you know, back when I was a kid, we had music classes and we had a full performance as a small band. I was probably like, you know, like 9 to 10 years old. And we had a small performance as a band in front of all the parents in the school. And I was the singer. I remember I was so nervous, I had sunglasses on. It really, really helped. I'm feeling a lot better now. Are you ready for the news? So, I was browse. That was that. Aus, 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 aus. The f was that? <laughs> My voice breaking. Am I becoming a teenager? I hope so. No, but I was checking Guitar World magazine because that's where I get most of my news from. And I just saw a title of an article that was saying that Jeff Bridges on how his bread love signature acoustic will help save the planet and why he started his first rock band at 60. Okay, he's trying to save a planet with an acoustic guitar. Excuse me, but what? I had no idea. Jeff Bridges was playing guitar. <laughs> He's one of my favorite actors, obviously from like The Big Lebowski and all that. And I was really surprised to hear that he is a guitar player. And I mean, if you look at this picture right here, he basically looks like he was born with a guitar right there. And this made me so curious, I have to check out his band. Uh, what is it called? It's called Jeff Bridges. What a little bit of love can do. Is this country? Oh, this will probably demonetize my channel, but I mean, look at this. It's Jeff Bridges. It's the dude. <laughs> oh my god, that auto tune is horrible. <laughs> Who's this guy in the back? What is he doing? He's just chilling. Oh my god, this is a really cool song, but the auto tune is out of this world. Yeah, no, I can't I can't take that. All right. What's this? Okay. Oh, here's actually playing guitar what which I can hear. That's good. All right. All right. All right. All right. He can play guitar. That's cool. I like this. This is cool. This is how Jeff Bridges should do it. I don't know where that autotune crap was from, but I mean, this is cool. I like this. But watching this also made me think like, okay, what about the other, you know, movie actors out there that can play guitar? Who else is out there? Oh, smack. Okay, that's okay. It happens. Steven Seagal, guys. Steve Steven Seagal. You know, legend in action movies. Watched this shit when I was a kid. It's a done deal. Sexy man. Okay. I've seen Steven play before. He's playing with his thumb, which is cool. Doesn't use a pick. This, this video is uploaded 2016. Okay. Right H thumb technique. Okay, good. Now I know. Right hand thumb technique. He's a better blues player than I am, for sure.
I hope he's okay, he's sitting down. That's not too cool. Epic! <laughs> I mean, this is cool. I mean, he's doing a good job, I think. I mean, I, ho I really hope his back is alright because he's sitting down. Thanks for watching. Okay, how about Johnny Depp? You know Johnny Depp? Of course you do. Top 10 John Depp unforgettable live guitar solos. Okay. Was that one solo? Dude, he's wearing his guitar very, very far down. I can't really hear what he's playing. Seems like no one else does as well. What the f is he wearing? He's wearing like three types of different pyjamas. I mean, I love Johnny Depp as an actor, he's incredible. But... I mean, what's on his arms there? Five different sweaters on or something. I mean, not many guitar players can play with the guitar strapped as low as Johnny Depp is doing right here. So, I'm gonna say, kudos to that. Jean Yanni Depp, guitar solo. Oh shit, there's the worst guitar solos of all time. Okay, I. This is, this is not what I do on my channel. I just wanna skip to, to uh, Johnny Depp. I don't care about the, these other guys. Ugh, this is not a hating channel, okay? I just wanna. Madonna? Okay. Kurt Cobain? Okay. Yeah. Bert Dirta Bert the Deep Dirta. That's what I heard. Okay, what's this? This is cool. I like this. Playing a Dobro guitar. That's a Dobro, right? I'm gonna get lynched for saying that wrong. Uh, hello. It's watching into my soul right there. Ah, oh, this isn't alive, maybe. This is... Alright, it's a little bit too much licking for my taste, but... You know, that was pretty cool. I found out that Jeff Bridges play guitar. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like uh, Jeff Bridges. He's the dude. So, that's cool. What other, like, uh, movie characters are playing guitar? Let me know in the comment section if you have a tip of someone I should check out. I want to check more Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. Guitar. Dust my broom. Okay. Steven Seagal's incredible guitar collection. Okay, now we're talking, guys. Only Holy shit, okay. He also has a collection of almost 300 guitars. Guitars! I collect guitars because I'm a serious player and I've been playing since I was a child. And I love guitar and I... It's hard to uh, kind of take his voice serious at this point. <laughs> I just don't let him out of my sight. <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan. Cool. Jimi Hendrix's Stratocaster. That's not a Stratocaster, just saying. That's a jazz master, okay. I, I, sorry, I can't hear what he's saying. I think his teeth are like caught in his lip or something. I was a huge fan of Steven Seagal back in the day. You know, I liked his videos. Nowadays, I haven't seen too much of that. It's really cool to see that he's playing guitar, though. That makes me really happy. Yeah, I, I just... I don't know why I did this. You know, I just thought it was interesting that Jeff Bridges was playing guitar. I had no idea. And, and now I kind of derail by checking out uh, Steven Seagal and Johnny Depp. But that's what we do on the news. It's not actually news, it's just all like checking out some bullshit, I guess. So, since it is a new guitar day today, and, you know, I wanted to make some really, really heavy ass riffs, I figured... I would change the strings on this guitar right here and tune it to uh, the standard with a drop C. Let me put this victory pedal out of the way. This is a victory pedal. Uh, I'm gonna try it for Willow Chug later. Put it on the floor. So this guitar comes in standard E, like most of our guitars, except for like the artist guitars or something like that. Last week I made a song that wasn't standard E. I felt like I wanted to do a drop C one today. So, so I'm gonna change the strings and I mean, oh shit, look at this. Can you see this? That is a nice top. 
right the f there. Look at that. I mean, that's pure sex. And usually this is what I do for my My Guitar videos. If you haven't seen those videos, it's basically me standing around, you know, doing a setup of a guitar and, you know, talking about them and so on. Since this is a new guitar and, you know, it's a solar guitar and you, you guys will probably be like, oh, oh, you're just standing there trying to sell your own guitar solo. This is basically exactly the same as making, you know, advertisement for Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> no, it's not. It's me changing strings on my guitar so I can make heavier riffs for Sunday with Ola. Okay? I figured I would take this grandpa looking guitar and just make it sludgy as f So I can go full on sludge hammer on this one. Sludge town. Let's go to sludge town, everyone. So this one has an Evertune bridge, which makes things a lot easier. Uh, apparently. If you haven't seen already, that my guitar series, because it's just me standing here talking out of my ass, and you know, sometimes I say some good shit and give some good advices, sometimes I do not, most of the times, I probably do not, but it's actually very, very deep. Maybe you can get something out of it. I'm using these GHS uh, 10 to 52. I have so many of them. I'm not sponsored by any brand. I just have so many of them. You know, I'm happy with the strings. I don't really care that much about what strings I'm putting on the guitar, but uh, people do. So I tell them what I use. For me personally, I don't care that much which strings I'm using as long as they're not, you know, shit or old or something like that. I just, you know. Take whatever's available, basically. Shit, man, I actually didn't look too much at the uh, back of the body here. Look at that. That's a beautiful... Oh, that's me! Hello! What's up? This is so exciting. Standing here, putting strings on my guitar. I saw a comment once that's saying, Why is this interesting watching Ola change strings on his guitar? I have no idea. But people watch it. You know, personally, I like it because it's some somewhat of a therapy session for me. Because uh, I have a problem. I have not the most functioning brain out there. I can't do two things at the same time. So when I'm changing strings, I'm really like focusing on actually changing the strings. See, I can't even pull the string right here and talk and say, you know, and, sh and say shit that makes sense. I'm just not smart enough for that. It's the same thing with like, you know, singing and playing guitar at the same time. They say you can practice these things. I say, for me, it's uh, probably uh, not possible at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just not in my uh, brain's nature to do two things at the same time. But that's what you have wives for, okay? Right, Louise? No, I said, since I can't do two things at the same time, then it's good to have a wife. Hello? <laughs> yes, I am talking to you. It's important to have a wife that listens. Mine was not at that moment. I understand the struggle. You know, because I'm the exact same. You know, when she talks, you know, if I'm doing something, I just don't hear. I just don't listen. <laughs> That's a problem. And while this was meant to be a string changing video, now we're talking about my brain and my wife and uh, my lack of brain. So a very common question I get from people is that like, why do you have locking tuners if you have a, like a locking Floyd on your guitar, for instance? Well, I think the locking tuners are basically like a luxury for you when you're stringing guitars. I mean, look at this. I just, you know, strung the, uh, the string inside the tuner. I just locked it right there. I can just leave it like this and just saves a shit bunch of time, basically. It's, it's a nice luxury to have. So now I'm going to try and avoid getting a string in my eye. Guest appearance, Luis. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> How often, when you speak to me, does it feel that I'm not listening? Uh, I don't know. Daily? <laughs> Daily, like 50% or...? No, not always, but uh, quite a few times. Yes, okay. I haven't really counted. No, but you're used to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was just saying that you didn't respond to me when I was talking to you. And then I just said, you know, that's how you feel. Yes, you can experience it. But uh, you're like recording a video and I'm not actually listening to the conversation that I'm having with myself. Okay. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Okay. Back to work. See ya. Smell my little penis. Okay. Let's go. Smelly. Okay. That's a riff angle right there. Okay. Let me try it out. Right. 
I'm gonna adjust a little truss rod. So the neck had a slight, slight, slight little banana bow like this, okay? So I'm just gonna adjust the neck a little bit so it gets a little bit more like straight, like this. Not like this, but more straight, okay? And that we do... That is my, uh, me being smelly as f Okay, good. I do half a turn somewhat, or am I? I'm not sure if I'm doing a half turn, but I'm just saying. Oh my god, it looks great. Penis in brain. All right, I'm gonna head back and then I'm gonna write that intro song right there. But once you're seeing this, you already heard the song. So I guess you have to rewatch this video. And then I get the double the amount of views. So that's great. That's Ola's adventure right there. Thank you. So for just the tip... Uh, okay, so for the tip of the week, I have this link to a uh, Silosis show. Uh, it's actually just the first song. It's I Severe or Severe. But it's part of a live show of Silosis. They made an online kind of thing where, uh, you know, you can uh, pay and you can watch the entire show. And they released this one song from that show. I mean, just look at this. It's the absolute tightest recording I've ever heard. It's insane. Now, Silosis is an incredible band. If you have not checked them out yet, do so. It's an incredible band. Uh, Josh Middleton, uh, the singer and guitar player, controls the whole band, I guess. He's also uh, in Architects as well. And this live music video right here is incredible. It's insanely tight. It sounds incredible. I'm gonna put the link to this video in the description. You can check it out, okay? It's amazing. Thank you. All right, so in the beginning of the video, you heard that song that I made for this Sunday with Ola. Now, the drums from last week's Sunday with Ola has been downloaded by an insane amount of people. And people have tried and put their awesome, awesome riffs to those drums. And it's uh, really exciting to see. I've been receiving a ton of comments from people saying that, you know, they've never written as much as now when they've you know, participated in the Sunday with Ola challenge. So that makes me really happy, just making people write riffs. And my pick from last week's Sunday with Ola challenge is Joss Allen, who has this song. He made this. Look at that stank face right there, man. He knows it. <laughs> Joss Allen, by the way, is an incredible guitar player. An absolute shred fest of a player. Shit. And, and this video already has 334 views. Oh my god. Is he sponsored by PlayStation 4? No. Okay, I guess he's not. Nice. Oh. Good job. Joss Allen, everyone. If you want to be as cool as Joss, you can download the drums in the description of this video for this song that was in the intro of this video and you can make your own riffs to that. Upload it to YouTube, name it Sunday with Ola number 12 riff challenge or whatever and I'll find you on YouTube, okay? And maybe you'll get featured in the next Sunday with Ola. Great! Riff of the day! So for that riff of the day, this guitar is in standard D with a drop C. It's a very, very simple riff. Uh, people have been asking for simpler riffs, so this one is for you guys. It's very, very simple. It goes like this. Simple as f Okay, the important thing to get this riff right sounding is that you do a slide from 1st to 4th fret. Put a little groove into it, like a hang out your boss when you do that slide. Ok, 
Okay, it was a little exaggerated, but I was trying to hang out my balls right there. Okay, thank you. Ola tasting shit. Okay, so before I do Ola tasting shit, I just want to do a little shout out because I received this. Can you see this? No? This right here is a guitar stand. You know, for when you uh, change strings, you put your guitar neck like this. And it's made looking like the Ola England logo. And this is from Håkan Carlson. He sent this to me. He sent me this and said, like, you basically inspired me to start playing guitar again. And I've also started to design my own guitar that I plan to build this autumn. So as a thank you, I would like to send you this. If you don't like it, you can use it as firewood. <laughs> I like his style. Just saying. But this is really cool. I'm gonna put this in my guitar setup studio over there. So thank you so much, Håkan. When Håkan sent me this, he used a bag of bilar as, uh, you know, packing material. Unfortunately, I don't have anything for all the tasting shit. And uh, these were actually meant for Louise, but I'm gonna eat them anyway. Oh. This is a really classic Swedish candy right here. It's basically cars from 1953, okay? When I was a kid and I ate these, I was like, oh, the car's going into my mouth. Oh. Brum, 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 brum. Really good. If you find these online, buy them. They're tasty. All right, so it's time for the FAQ section of my video. And to start off, I got a question from Keith because we're going a little back and front asking uh, shit. And he asked me this question. My question for you this week, Mr. Ola, is now that you've sort of settled into your new studio and you got things kind of set up the way you want it, do you have any plans for any big upgrades, any studio upgrades? I know you recently did a Mac Pro, which is awesome. Uh, and I'm not talking about like the guitars and the gear that you demo in your videos. I'm talking about the production side of it. I know that you get nerdy with cameras and lighting and everything that goes into creating videos like this. I'm wondering, do you have any plans for upgrades in that department or do you feel like you're at a pretty good spot with it? What are you currently using? That's my question for you this week, my friend. Let me know. Thank you so much, Keith. Hope you're good. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you. Probably the best question I've ever received. No, it's probably not the best question I've received, but it's a very good question, I must say. So I've had this office for like half a year right now, and obviously a lot has happened since I moved in. You know, I got all these absorbers, I got these curtains and all that. For you guys who've seen my videos, as you can see, you know, I have this one recording room where I have my, you know, coffee with Ola happening over there. And, you know, my Willard Chug happens there. Also a bunch of my lessons over there, right there. There's the office and all that. The absorbers that look really good. Uh, curtains over there and then my desk right here. Very, very straightforward. You know, I have my Mac Pro, as you said, and I'm really happy with that. I have, you know, my audio interface. I feel really, really good. The only thing now that I think that I would want if I would fix something in here is my lighting situation right here. I actually have LED lights and using these I can, you know, put light like this. So it's a regular, you know, day in Ola's office. I can put it, you know, to, to red, to what's this? to a green, to blue if I want, and then, you know, in between. It's pretty cool, actually, so I like having it uh, like, uh, where are we, like, what? Uh, like this, a little, uh, a little, you know, pink. And having, you know, LED panels like this is an absolute luxury. And, you know, I have this, which is my big ass front light happening right here. I would love to get a more modular system where I can hang lights like these up in the ceiling. So I don't have to have stands for everything. I hate stands, basically. It's, uh, stands are the worst. I mean, look at it. They're everywhere. Stands, stands for that, stands for this, stands for that. It's just stands everywhere. If I can put stuff in the ceiling, that would be the absolute best. That's something I want to do. I want to put these lights up in the ceiling and maybe make them movable in some way. Other than that, now, I'm good to go. I'm happy with my camera situation right here. I'm really happy with my lighting. I'm really happy with this room. I think now it's just like, I'm just gonna crank out the f content. That's what it's all about. All right, so back at you, Keith. I have a question for you. You've been playing Schecter for a shit ton of years now, and you have your own signature guitar, but what is your favorite second guitar brand? And why is it Solar Guitars? I'm just kidding. I've seen you with like Agile and Ibanez and all that. What is your second choice when it comes to guitars? Please let me know. See ya. Okay, let's take some questions from real people. And to Tenio, what about the Solar Ola England 
signature guitar. Okay, I've received this question a lot. Where is the Solar Guitars Ola England signature guitar? You know, the good thing about having your own brand is that you call the shots. And with my own brand, I don't want to have a signature guitar. I don't feel that I need a signature guitar. Uh, you know, I can play basically any of the guitars in the Solar line. But we do have the Solar Artist that we call them. And basically it's sort of what I would spec up for a guitar that I would use live, you know, like the... Do I have one here? No. Because I'm always unprepared. The Solar Artist is basically how I would spec up a guitar, you know, in D standard, uh, every tune, locking tuners, lumen lay, stainless steel frets, one volume knob, no tone or anything like that. That's basically as close as you can get to an old England signature guitar. I just don't want to have a signature guitar. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm kind of over having signature gear uh, in general. That's just me. That's just how I want to roll and continue with my life, basically. So there you go, thank you. Dr. Crazy, hi Ola, what advice would you give to someone who thinks their music is not good enough or to someone who keeps comparing their music to everyone else's? Sometimes I find it tough to keep going when I'm writing and recording. Any help would be greatly appreciated. P.S. Thank you so much for all you do and hope you and your family are all safe. Thank you so much, baby. I think a lot of musicians out there at some point have you know, compare themselves or, you know, think that they're not as good as their favorite band or writing as good music as their favorite band or whatever. I think it's in our nature to compare. I was probably doing this a lot more when I was younger, but as you grow older, you kind of grow a confidence and an understanding that not everyone in the world is going to like your music. And that's fine. That's what's so beautiful about music. People like different things. So, when you've grasped that and you found good enough self-confidence that you can rely on your ability to write something without, you know, trying to compare it to, you know, Meshuggah Bleed or whatever, then you're probably going to become very, very happy. My tip for this would probably to not listen to other people's music while you're recording and writing. You know, when you're writing, it might not sound good, but if you pull on a really good production over that riff or whatever, it might sound really, really kick ass. So, you know, if it's a good riff with a shitty production, you know it's a really good riff. But some riffs can sound like absolute shit with bad production, but when you get a full-size production happening, it can sound really, really good. So production can really save a riff in that sense. So even though you think your songs might be shit, maybe it just needs a better production and a better sound, and maybe it will pop out, you know. I hope that was good advice. Thank you. <laughs> Danger, if you could only have one guitar for the rest of your life, which and why? Not sure if I answered this question before. If I got the question, I probably uh, answered something else that I'm gonna answer right now. I don't know, I would probably pick a Solar because the Solar is sort of like a Swiss Army knife. And uh, which one would I take? I would probably take something like this. This is a really good one. Something in the lines of this probably. Something that has an Evertune bridge, you know, stainless steel frets. This is a bolt-on, which I really, really like. Humbucker. Single call or humbucker here, it doesn't matter, I can always split if there's a humbucker there. Just something simple. This guitar right here can handle basically anything. And I'm not saying that to sell the guitar, I'm just saying it's uh, it's basically like a Swiss army knife of guitars. Uh, it plays good, feels good, I feel very familiar when I play it. And it's just, I mean, it could have been this guitar. It could have been that guitar as well, but you know, they're kind of similar, all of them. Then I would just go by looks, I mean, maybe this? Just because of the looks? Who knows? So yeah, that was a very lame answer. If I didn't get to pick a solar guitar just for the sake of politics right here, I would probably have my Strat, my Fender Custom Shop Strat as my only guitar because that's also sort of like a, a middle ground of everything that I would want. Uh, it has a humbucker in it, it's, it's, a, it's a sick playing guitar and it's, it's good. It's good. I could say that I would, you know, pick a dime bag guitar, but it's just so big and, you know, a, a Stratocaster is just easier to carry around, just saying. And uh, I do love my Dimebag guitars though, they're amazing. And that, my friends, was the last question of the Sunday with Ola. Hope you enjoyed this little video. I really, really hope you have a great Sunday, okay? And I really, really hope you take care of yourself and your loved ones, okay? Don't forget who they are, don't forget who you are, and have a great, great Sunday. My members, I love you. Member. Become a member. Thank you. <laughs>